Sorry, I was just mixing some more lightener. Um, thank you everybody for joining me this morning. My name is Nichelle Desotel. I am a field education trainer with the Wella Company here in Vancouver, BC. Um, I'm excited to be on Wella Canada West today. Thank you Wella Canada West for having me. Um, we are going to be talking about color correction today. So I have created a little scenario for you guys. Hi Zena. Um, but a little bit of housekeeping before I get started. It is just me by myself today. I do have a coworker in the chat. Um, so if you have any questions, please use the chat question cards. Um, otherwise, I will try and keep an eye on the chat as much as I can. Um, so yeah, color correction. Um, anybody that's taken a class by me knows that color correction is my passion. I love a good problem to solve. Um, I love doing color correction in the salon. I, and <clears throat> I love teaching about color correction. So if anybody's taken a color correction class from me, you know that I, I love it. I'm very, very passionate about it. So today the scenario I wanted to, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. The scenario I wanted to create for you guys today was something that I've seen a little bit, um, definitely in the last year, where I have a highlight client that was a traditional all over foil um, and then they, you know, have roots at home and instead of booking another highlight appointment, they decide to use a box color at home to cover up their roots. So what we end up with is we end up with the old highlights and then we end up with a banding um, of kind of hot roots and then we end up with a little bit of their natural roots. Now, full disclosure, this is really hard to create on a mannequin. I tried my very, very best to create this scenario for you guys. Um, I'm gonna take a section down to just kind of show you guys. So. And I might just bring her in closer. Oops. There we go. All right. So as you can see, she is a all over highlight. So her ends are quite light. She's got highlights all throughout there. And then at her root here, um, it's always so hard to see in the light here. She's got a little bit of her natural in there, but then you can kind of see right about here, she's got a hot band of where she tried to touch up her color with a color at home. Now I've definitely seen this in the salon before. Um, oftentimes they come in right away, but sometimes they do come in with a little bit of root and I do find it, it is easier to kind of control or correct when we do have a little bit of root, but yeah, I'm trying to see if you guys can see that. So you can see that kind of warm band there. And if I pull her up, um, yeah, you can see, you can see that banding that she's created there, right? All right. Give me hearts if you can see. <laughs> Awesome. Hi, Lauren. Thanks for joining. Awesome. So how I'm going to correct this in this kind of scenario, when I have a little bit of roots and then I have a hot band, um, I like to go in with foils to correct this. And the reason being is it gives me a lot of control to kind of blend everything out um, and everything like that. Now, what can happen in this kind of scenario is we can go in with thousands of foil. Hi. <laughs> We can go in with like thousands of foil um, all over the head, take you know two hours to foil their head and you will get a beautiful result. But what I wanted to show you guys was a quicker or, um, yeah, quicker or express way, I guess to put it, of correcting this scenario. So I'm gonna be doing foiling, but I'm not gonna be foiling every single section. So I have a foil here just to hide the corrected side. Hi, thanks for joining. Um, we're doing a live color correction today, so hopefully stay tuned. All right, so um, this is my sectioning here. Now, in, in a real world, this would be sectioned all the way across, but I have you know my nape sectioned out, and I've already foiled that section. I'll talk about that in a second. And then I have um, kind of the center of the head sectioned out. Um, 
just below the parietal ridge to the top of the nape, and then I have the crown sectioned out, okay? Then on the sides, I have it sectioned just at the bottom, just below the parietal ridge or the hat line, and then I have my top sectioned out right here, okay? We're only gonna be working in three of these um, five sections, so I'm gonna be foiling the nape, foiling the crown, and foiling this front section here. Um, she lost one of her little buns. Um, so everything that's not highlighted, I'm actually going to root melt. So everything that's left out is gonna get root melted. And what that's gonna do is it's going to kind of blend out that line um, and that banding for me without having to go through and foil it all. And the nice thing about the sections that I've chosen to root melt, sorry, I'm just gonna get this to stick, perfect. So this section here, just below the parietal ridge and this kind of section here um, below the parietal ridge in the front, I'm gonna be root melting there. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna add some more depth into there. So it's really gonna make those highlights on top pop. So it's a great way of not having to foil every section of the head and also give your um, highlights some dimension back, especially if they've gone through and tried to touch it up at home, okay? All right, for all of you guys that just joined, we're doing a live color correction. Um, just so you guys know, the scenario is a highlight client that went home and um, had roots and decided to try and touch it at home with a box. So she ended up with a bit of a banding um, and then her highlights, okay? All right, so I'm going to get right into it. Let me just adjust my mannequin here. Sorry, guys, thank you. All right, so in the back, I already started my foiling, um, just because I didn't think you guys wanted to see me foiling all the way. So what I do is I, it's something I like to call piggyback foiling, and I'm gonna show you guys that in the front section here. But I've worked kind of diagonal with the hairline here, working up to the top of that section. So I end up with just a little section of hair left out, but that's okay. Um, there's a highlight and then a low light mix throughout there. Okay, so that's what I did. So I'm working diagonal from the hairline up to the top of that section. The reason why I decided to work diagonally is because it really helps in blending everything out, especially that banding that she's created. Um, and it's a good way to cover a lot of ground quickly as well. So we get a lot of blend and um, it covers ground. And since it follows the natural hairline, when she pulls her hair up, it's gonna fall really nicely and you're not gonna get that stripiness um, that you can tend to get if you work horizontally through that whole section, okay? Awesome. So the next section I'm gonna work on here is going to be the crown. In this section, I am gonna work horizontally because um, it's just better to work, when we're working in the crown area, it's always good to work with kind of the way the hair naturally falls, otherwise we can end up with spots. So and just let me know if you guys need me to turn her or anything, I'm gonna try my best here, perfect. All right, so we're leaving this section out down here. Um, just for foiling sake, I am gonna take my clip out just cause it can get in the way. But there you can see, <laughs> you can see my color correction scenario really well there. <laughs> um, all right, so the two products I'm working with today, I am working with my Blondor Plex, mixed one part powder to one and a half parts of my 10 volume. And then I have my Illumina Color I am using six stroke one nine. So it's a level six ash sandre, which is a soft violet for my low light. Um, what I love about using Illumina in this kind of scenario, it's gonna have a really nice natural reflect. So we're gonna get kind of natural highs and lows, um, which is gonna reflect her natural grow out better. So we're trying to get her back to look like she's a highlight client again. Um, and then also because of the violet rosé base that's in it, it um, it's gonna really help me tone out that, that orange banding that she has in there. I know the camera doesn't pick it up very well, um, but if you could see this in person, like this was cringeworthy to do for me. <laughs> all right, so piggyback foiling, what that is, and I'm sure all of you guys have done this in the salon before. So I'm gonna take about a quarter of an inch section. Okay. And I'm going to weave out um, where I want my highs to be, so my highlights to be, okay? And then I'm gonna clip it out of the way, that top section out of the way, holding 
what was left out of that weave in my hand. Okay. <clears throat> then I'm gonna grab just a little bit more hair from the section below me. And I'm going to foil this. So this is gonna be my low light. I'm gonna get in there nice and tight. So yeah, you guys can see she's got a little bit of her natural root here, and then she has an orange band here, and then she has her old highlights there. So I'm gonna take my low light, kind of keeping off where the natural root is. This is hard to do from the side like this, but there we go. And I'm just gonna paint it down. Okay. I'm not gonna paint all the way to the ends. I'm just gonna kind of paint a little bit down, maybe the first third of that section, um, just to create kind of a natural um, low light in there. Okay. I'm trying to do this with still giving you guys visibility, so don't mind me. And then I'm gonna take that section down that I had originally weaved out, and I'm going to highlight this. So this is going to be my highlight. What's nice about doing it this way is those low lights will pop out in between my highlights now, and um, it will give me that dimension back while blending out the banding that she put in there. So this is a great technique for this kind of color correction, but this is also a great technique if you have a client that's been over highlighted um, and just wants to bring a little bit of dimension back into her hair. This is a really great technique to do that. Okay. So I've got my lightener, my blonder plex, and my 10 volume here. Now you'll notice I'm working with a really small brush um, just to have a nice precise application. And I'm just going to touch up her roots there. Okay. Now I do do two folds, especially when I'm doing just roots because I like to keep it nice and tight and I find doing two folds keep those, keeps those highlights in, especially if I need to go in and do a color in between or a root melt in between. Um, it, I find they just stay in the head a little bit better. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move up about a quarter of an inch. Oh, sorry, I just realized my arm is right in the way. Here, hold on, guys. There we go. Hopefully this is better. There we go. So there's a quarter of an inch there. Okay. You can see when I hold up how bad that, that banding is here. So I'm going to take my section, grab my highlight, Clip it out of the way and take the section on the bottom and this will be my low light. So I can move up this section this way all the way up in the back. So I'm kind of keeping it off the natural root and then I'm just kind of flicking the color down a little bit, not bringing it all the way down to the ends. Cause usually people that are an all over highlight um, they still like the brightness on their ends, and I find when you bring the low light all the way down, um, it can look stripey, and it can get, um, oftentimes they don't particularly like it, so um, that's why I'm only bringing it part of the way down. Okay. Then I'll bring my highlight down. just kind of touching up the roots and where that little bit of banding is that she's put in there so nicely for us. Okay. There's definitely lots of different ways you can tackle this kind of color correction. Um, another way that I've done in the past is just by doing a root melt and then having them come back in for highlights. Um, if they have um, enough roots for me to highlight, I will, I like going through this way, but if they don't have enough for me to highlight safely without getting into that danger zone of where the highlights meet, um, or where it's, you know, when people come in with too short of roots, it's hard to, hard to foil them sometimes. Um, 
what I'll do is I'll root melt them just to kind of blend out that line or that, um, that warmth and banding. And then when they come back in, I will, you know, in a, a month or so when they have a little bit more regrowth for me to work with, then I'll go in and do this technique again. Okay. So obviously when I'm doing this in the salon, um, this moves quite a bit faster. Um, I'm just a little bit slower when I'm trying to explain things at the same time. Yeah, I'm just weaving one, clipping it out of the way, and then low lighting the bottom. Okay. Awesome. What level are you wanting the end result to be for her highlights? So my goal is to um, match her regrowth to what we have on her ends here. So on her ends, she's actually about a level eight, eight and a half. So um, I'm hoping to get her there. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and um, if you've ever tried to, so a, a common mistake people make when somebody comes in with, you know, permanent hair color that they've lifted their hair with, um, they assume just because it's already light, it's easy to lift out. And that's not always the case. Permanent hair color is still permanent hair color. So when, um, oh, I mixed that one up. See, that's what happens when I was talking. So this will be my low light here. Sorry, guys. Um, so when, when we're lifting out permanent hair color, regardless of whether it's a level, you know, eight or nine or a level um, five, the pigments are definitely harder to re remove from the hair. So just because she's created this banding that's about a level six doesn't mean it's gonna be easy for me to lift out. So I'm working with my 10 volume Blonder Plex today um, and I'm gonna work kind of low and slow. So this is my low light with my Illumina color, just bringing it down. Has anybody run into this color correction scenario in the salon? Give me some hearts if you have. I know I definitely did, especially after um, lockdown. A lot of people <laughs> had tried to attempt to do their hair at home. Okay. So I'm just going to continue working up this part of the head in that fashion. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, now for me, I, I love color correction. I, I could do color correction all day. Um, but I know a lot of people kind of panic when they get color correction in their chair. Um, I always kind of tell people when we're doing color correction, the best thing you can do is break it down into steps. So what, do, what is wrong? You know, what do I, what do I need to correct and what's the best way to approach it? So, um, break it down into steps. Don't overthink it. Um, sometimes it's a matter of just um, looking at it as a whole and then breaking it down into what all the steps that need to be corrected and then coming up with a game plan of how that's going to all tie together. Um, sometimes it can get overwhelming if you try and correct too many things at the same time. So um, it's always good to just break it down and take it one step at a time. Um, and also when it comes to formulation and everything like that, you're really not going to know until you start getting in there and, and seeing what's, what's happening on the hair. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, this will be my last foil here because I'm going to move up to the front and show you guys. So another thing you'll probably notice is I don't manipulate my foils too much. I give them a nice fold and use my comb to fold them in. Um, when I'm working with product kind of right at the root like that, I want to really be careful not to push on that foil or kind of slap the foil with my comb because you can push that product up and cause bleeding of your foils. So, all right. So let's just pretend um, I worked all the way up until this section here. So I continue doing that all the way up in this section. The next section I'm going to do um, after that crown section is finished is I will do kind of two foils right in the hairline here. So I'll show you those. Whoops, just got slippery hair today. Perfect. 
So I'm going to take, you know, foil right along our hairline here. And do a similar thing where I take my highlight out, flip it out of the way, and then this is all gonna get low lighted, okay? So I'm actually gonna turn her a little bit. Um, when I'm doing these hairline foils, it, it is a really awkward spot to work um, and get really close into. Um, I always ask my clients to kind of turn their head a little bit so I'm able to get a bit of leverage there. Um, don't be scared to ask your clients to turn. Like obviously I'm working on a mannequin right now so she's gonna do whatever I tell her to do. But um, don't ever be scared to ask your clients to help you out a little bit. Um, Now I'm not going to bring down these ones around the face too far, just enough to add a little bit of dimension so those baby lights around the face really pop. Okay. Okay. Now has anybody done this foiling technique before? Piggyback foils like this? Give me some hearts if you have. I'll be honest that I actually learned this from one of the stylists I apprenticed under, you know, 15 years ago. <laughs> um, and she used to do all her highlight clients like this, all the highlight and low light to keep that dimension in there. Um, and I always thought it was so much work, but honestly, it's a beautiful way of doing it. Um, it's a great way, you know, if your clients have gotten over highlighted or if you're dealing with this kind of color correction scenario, um, Because what I can find, what I find when we do like a highlight, low light, highlight, low light, um, leaving sections out in between, is we can kind of get almost too dark left, too much or <laughs> too much dark left out, um, and it can kind of look stripy. So by doing it this way, it it incorporates the low lights in between your highlights, which is really cool. Oh, Zena's done it before. Awesome, yeah. So I'll do one more. So I just cover this entire hairline. You guys can see. I'm trying my best to stay out of your way. So that brings me up to the entire hairline here. You can see I'm going to do the same thing. These ones are back to back here because um, I'm really just trying to get the hairline done quickly. So I'll put my low light in. Now you could do this with color touch. You could do this with Colistan. I chose Illumina, um, one, because I love Illumina, and two, oh, sorry guys. Hmm. Um, two, because of that Violet Rosé base, it really helps me um, in this scenario to kind of tone out that warm banding that she put, put in there so nicely for me. <laughs> All right, so my next one's gonna be my highlight. So you could go through and foil the entire head like this, um, and you will get a beautiful result from it. Um, but I'm all about working smarter and not harder. Um, so that's why I'm choosing only to do three of the five sections um, versus doing the entire head. It's just time consuming, and to get the result we need, you don't necessarily need to foil every piece of the head. Um, it's really good. You know, we need the darkness to see the light, right? So. Um, by keeping some depth in there, by doing the root melt in between in those left out sections, um, we really get that depth back in there for, for this client. All right. Okay. And how you decide to highlight the hairline is gonna be different client to client. Um, every client has a different hairline. Mannequins have pretty easy hairlines to follow. So um, I was able to just do four foils there. And then I'm going to take the, this rest of this section out. I'll show you guys. Oops. There we go. So all of this is going to get left out. What I'm going to do is root melt this to get rid of that banding there. Okay. But all of that will get left out. Now moving up to the top, again, I'm going to be working diagonal back. Um, so I'm going to be working with the hairline. 
So I'm just gonna grab my first foil right against her hairline. Okay. And I'm working with small thin sections around the hairline. Um, the kind of general rule, rule of thumb is always gonna be thin to win. Um, so can I read a newspaper through that section? Yes, then um, my section is thin enough. I don't wanna do anything too thick. Okay. I'm gonna grab the highlights here. Um, luckily this is my highlight job, so I know exactly where the highlights are. <laughs> there we go. Clip my highlight out of the way, and then I'm gonna do my low light in between, okay? Hi, thanks for joining guys. Awesome. So I'm gonna put my low light here, working kind of off where her natural root is and just pulling it slightly down. I'm not gonna go all the way down with the one in the, the ones in the high, oh, hairline. I'm going to um, just pull them a couple inches down. Okay. So I'm gonna continue working back through this section in this way um, by going through and doing a highlight and low light piggybacked on each other all the way until I get to the back of this section. And I'm just gonna show you guys in a second here. So I do have a finished side to show you guys. I did finish um, one side of her hair has actually been corrected. So I created this scenario on the entire head and then corrected one side for you guys in this way so you guys can see the finished result. Um, I'll also post a, a full, full picture um, later today once she's all processed so you guys can see how this side turned out so you know I didn't lie. <laughs> um, all right. Now that I've done the one right on the hairline, I'm gonna move, make, take a slightly bigger section. Um, you could do two back to back like that if you wanted um, lots of brightness on her hairline, but I'm just trying to get her back to a regular highlight. So there's my highlight section taken out there. And then this section down here will get low lighted. And each section I go back, I pull it down, pull the low light down just a little bit further. That's gonna create that kind of gradient of a little bit brighter and around the face to darker as we get back here. That gives you that kind of depth. But again, I'm not pulling all the way through to the roots. I'm just pulling part of the way down. Tell she created a big mess. She's got some spotting in here. <laughs> All right. Okay. So for those of you guys that haven't worked with our new blonde or class. Blondorplex is just like the Blondor Multi Blonde Power that we know and powder that we know and love, but it has our Wellaplex bonding agent in it. So we're going to get up to 99% or 97% less breakage. Um, it has a very creamy consistency. I love working with it in foils. The consistency is so nice to spread and saturate onto the hair. Um, especially in this scenario, it, it does adhere to the foil very well and keeps my foils in place so I don't get any slipping, okay? All right, so I'll do one more for you guys in this section just so you guys can see. What I start doing as I get um, further away from the hairline, so I'm just gonna turn this for you guys, is I actually start kind of pivoting my foils a little bit. So I'm gonna show you guys. I start pivoting. 
So instead of being so diagonal like this, I've now pivoted my section like this. So as I get to the back, I get a little bit more horizontal toward the part line. Um, the reason being is if we go kind of very diagonal like this through the whole section, we can kind of get those stripes or those highlight stripes. Whereas if we start pivoting, um, we cover a lot more ground. Um, we get through that section a little bit faster um, and we don't get those stripes as much. Okay, so I'll do one more section for you guys so you guys can kind of see what I mean. So those first two foils I did back to back. This one I'm gonna be leaving a little bit of hair in between. Um, and this will get root melted in between. So I'm going to grab my highlight. This is much easier when you, you're the one that's foiled it because you can kind of see where your highlights are. <laughs> and then I'm going to clip that highlight out of the way and put my low light in here. Okay. So since I am working with a permanent color, I am trying to keep it off the natural root. Um, I, she is a nat natural level six. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about bumping the natural because um, I am using a level six. But um, if I was using a shade or something lighter, I would want to be very careful of getting onto the natural root. So if I was worried about a shift in their natural, um, maybe a Lumina color wouldn't be my first choice. And I would be looking at using Color Touch or a Demi Permanent instead for this. Um, but in this case, she's a mannequin. I'm not worried about her natural root. <laughs> All right. So then I just took that piece that I weaved out on top back. And whoops, I'm getting in nice and close to the root there. Now you'll probably notice I keep my brush nice and clean. Uh, when you're working with a little bit of root, it's really important to keep your tools clean. You'll probably hear me say that about everything. I'll admit, full disclosure, I'm a little OCD. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna show you guys something in a second here. Perfect. So I don't know if any of you guys use the Wella Bowls at all. So the Wella Bowls, this is what they look like. And you'll notice you have this little dip here. Um, you can actually set your brush on top like this and it keeps your brush clean. Um, so this is a really great way to keep your brushes clean and um, keep your application clean throughout. Okay. So I would go through the rest of this section in that fashion. Um, oh, we have a question here. Such a great technique to take someone who's been had bleach outs to more of a dimensional blonde with a softer grow. Yes, Beauty by Buns, that's a great call out. Um, this would be a great technique to take someone from a global lightning service back down to a highlight service or something that's a little bit more natural, for sure. I love the way you're thinking about that. Perfect. Um, all right, so we would follow up the rest of this section in that fashion, slowly kind of pivoting my highlights as I go through it. So when I end up at the top, um, oops, there we go. So when I end up at the top, I'm working in a more horizontal fashion like this. Um, and that's really gonna give us that, that soft kind of grow out. Um, then everything that's left in between, once I've got all my foils in, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go in between my highlights and I'm going to root melt. So the root melt that I'm gonna use is gonna be the same shade as my um, low light. So I'm gonna take my Illumina Color 6 stroke 19, so my level six Ash Sandre, and I'm gonna mix it with my 10 volume, and I'm just gonna do a soft root melt in between all my foils. Um, and I'm gonna bring those ones down, um, not so far down in between the foils. So I may take it like, if I say this is what's, Wait, where, there we go. In between the foils here, I may just take it down to where the banding is. And then in these sections that are left out, I might pull it down a little bit further to add that depth back in there and really give me the, um, that depth to pop it through, okay? All right, so rather than foiling for the next <laughs> 30 minutes, I'm going to show you guys my finished side. 
Um, I think you guys got a good grasp of the technique. If you ever have any more questions about it, um, feel free to message me offline. I'm going to give you guys my Instagram handle after this. Um, but I'm also going to be posting this. I'm going to finish this and then um, post it to my Instagram. Um, and we can share it on Well Account West so you guys can kind of see what the finished foil looks like with the root melt. And then, um, and then I'll also post the finished result too so you guys know that it worked. <laughs> All right, so the big reveal. And it never shows up just right on camera, so I'll pull her in. All right, so this is the finished result. Oops, sorry guys. There we go. So this is the finished result here. I'm just gonna take my gloves off. <laughs> um, so you can see here that really blended out that line of demarcation. Um, it gave her a really nice, soft, natural finish. Um, and you don't even see that banding in there, okay? So you can see around the hairline, we got rid of all that banding there. It really blended out that, that band, that natural that she had in there. Um, kind of show you guys here, oops, there we go. So you can see through here where I had more depth left in because I took my root down further, but then it kept the hairline still nice and bright. Okay. So it really blended out all that, that banding that was in there. I'm gonna show you guys the back too. Okay. Oops, she's kind of kinky back here. I had clips in there. So you can see all that banding's gone. Um, those highlights and lowlights really blended it out. But the nice thing is you're not left with like this stripy highlight, low light result. You're left with this really beautiful, almost looks like a natural, she's been br brought back to a natural highlight without, um, forward here so you guys can see a little bit better see there you are so we got those nice highs and lows in there without looking stripey or anything like that okay awesome does anybody have any questions before I wrap up today awesome gorgeous great end result thank you guys thank you um, Thank you so much for joining me today. This will be saved to Wella Canada West IGTV. Um, so if you guys wanna go back and kind of dissect the um, application a little bit more, you definitely can. I will post the finished result of this slide um, later today. And I'll also post um, processing pictures so you guys can see the, um, the finished application. I just didn't wanna foil for an hour on Instagram Live for you guys. So I feel like that's kind of boring, so. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Beauty by Buns. You're, those are such kind words. Um, I appreciate your time. And if you guys want to give me a follow, my Instagram is the hair niche. Um, and also make sure you're following Well at Canada West. We're constantly posting education on here. We're live at you guys once a week on here. Um, and I hope to see you guys all again. Thank you so much. Have a great day.